Hi, I'm Warren Yates at YatesBanjos.com. Today I'd like to give you a little tip on banjo setup just to help you to maintain your banjo with a little bit more understanding. This issue is trying to understand the importance of the gap between the tension hoop and the neck and understanding what it does and how to control it. There are sounds that are influenced by the pot. There are sounds that are influenced by the neck. Somewhere between, they come together and it basically becomes the sound of the banjo at that point. So, depending on how all of these joints are put together, uh, can make a big difference. Uh, you've got this part of the neck that goes onto the tone ring and onto the rim and then you have this part that just goes onto the rim. In both cases they transfer sound back and forth. So for instance a mahogany neck basically means that a mahogany banjo means that the neck is made of mahogany where if it were maple it would have a little bit different characteristic. So the wood in the neck is very important to the sound. It is important that we have a solid contact between the neck and this area in here and the neck here and the rim. Uh, you want to transfer a good sound from the pot up the neck through these two points. At the same time you really don't want any pressure put against the flange because that can uh, change that sound. So you want a clearance between there. There is not a solid connection between the pot and the tension hoop. So you lose some sound transfer coming from the neck into the pot if this area is touching. Now, if your banjo sounds the way you want it to sound, then I would not touch it because this is a rule based on what I do, not necessarily on what you like. So. This is simply my opinion and the way I do this. But I like to see some kind of a gap between those areas. Now, how much gap does not matter because a half a thousandths and 500 miles is still a gap. But you want it to cosmetically look like a good product. Many times we've put banjos together trying to have the proper gap between there and it starts out exactly in the place we intend it to be and by the time we get through with the setup or the next day it seems like the gap closes up and it's, it was a very hard thing for us to understand as far as what was actually going on. Um, the neck does not draw closer to the pot but the tension hoop can move closer to the neck so I want to try to explain to you what's happening so that you can uh, make adjustments where needed if you decide to make a change here. This is a rough drawing that I've made to kind of look at a cutaway version of the banjo and how it's put together. And of course this looks somewhat like a tone ring. Uh, the head being across the top here and you can see how you've got the lip under the bottom that gives you something to pull against. Here is the neck and basically how it goes to try to miss that area and this is the gap that we're talking about trying to obtain. Um, this is the tension hoop that's pushing down on the head. If you'll notice there is a gap between the outer lip of the head and the tone ring. Well that tells me that if you're pushing against the tension hoop you're in effect pushing against the head which has no solid contact which can actually absorb like a piece of rubber or a spring or something some of the sounds that are trying to return back into the pot when you want everything to return back into the pot or from the pot up the neck depending on what is happening it's, it's actually both at the same time but if you look at this gap you can kind of see how it swings outward 
and it's not really touching the tone ring here. So we have a gap here. So this can be independently suspended from all of the solid mounted parts. With that said, let's look at the, the actual banjo in the application that you can actually see it. So here we have a gap and let's say I tighten the tension hoop down to the point that the head is up to tension where it needs to be and it's ready to string up and go. Well, if this is flexible, look at what happens. Okay, I can pull a bigger gap. I can push the gap out of it. Well, depending on where the tension hoop decides to end up is the amount of gap that you have. So, naturally when it leaves the the shop here I try to make sure that there's a gap but in shipment or time or whatever it can actually close up so you don't necessarily have to take the neck off and cut wood away one thing you can do is loosen the tension hoop uh, hooks and nuts push it away and tighten it back down now if it tries to seat back in its certain location you can actually take a feeler gauge of whatever measurement that you think is right put it in there so it holds that distance tighten it up and then when you pull the feeler gauge out it'll stay there okay let's say that you've done all that and the tension hoop just will not stay uh, and you have no choice but to cut the neck well if you have a machine to do it then that's great but if you don't have a machine then you're going to have to figure out how you're going to do it in your uh, living room or wherever you decide to do it. Now before you start cutting on your banjo, think about what you're doing. I don't recommend just jumping into working on a banjo before you know what you're doing. But this is to give you a little bit more understanding so that if it just has to be done, then you know what you're going to do. So in the case of you've got to sand some wood and you have no machine here is one process that you can do you can take a piece of sandpaper of some sort uh, maybe 220 or something like that or uh, 180 something that will be aggressive enough not to work you to death but um, just seems to actually move a little bit of wood you can take this and pinch it down between the tension hoop and the neck tighten up a little bit and as you pull it out you actually sand a little bit of wood so it's better to go easy trying to make your change than it is trying to um, be aggressive now if you were talking about a yates banjo uh, don't be so alarmed you don't have to buy a banjo and then start working on it it's set correctly when it leaves the shop but as things change things do need adjustment or say you have to change a head and all of a sudden the gaps closed up well now you know what to do to be able to fix it so in in general if you have a banjo that you're working on and you just can't adjust the tension hoop away far enough then here is how you might be able to adjust that okay let's say you've you've loosened your rods in the back so that you have a little bit of movement in the head. Now this one is tight, but say you, you can rock the neck a little bit and increase the gap. You can actually stick the piece of sandpaper down inside there. Pull the neck up or tighten it up just a little bit and you can move it back and forth or simply just pull it out and each time that you sand just a little bit. And when you finally achieve the results that you're looking for, then you have your gap and as I said before a gap is a gap it doesn't matter if it's a half a thousand or 500 miles it still does the same thing you just want it to cosmetically look like it's supposed to do and function the way it should I hope that helped you to understand a little bit of how to make this adjustment if indeed needed uh, the main thing is knowledge is power, and if you can work on your banjo and gain something from it, then we're all to the good. Uh, a little bit of thinking about it can go a long ways. Uh, please don't uh, email me to death or uh, ring my phone off the hook asking for technical help because uh, I need to build these good banjos in order to help the world there. So uh, between now and then, 
give it some thought. Think before you act. And uh, I'm Warren Yates at yatesbanjos.com. Uh, hope one day you'll be playing a Yates.